turn to Harvey Mansfield's How to Understand Politics. Mansfield's idea in this essay, actually first delivered as a Jeffersonian lecture, is the following. We do not have the right way of looking at the political world. And the reason why is we've been won over by this, by this idea that human beings aren't necessarily human more than they can be accounted for by reducing them to material well-being. Now here note something that Maclay has said and that likewise we find in other novels depicting the late 20th century American experience. The hope is that we come up with some consensus, some idea as to what the best life is, that is cookie cutter, that is white picket, that everyone agrees upon, and then the political story just becomes a matter of distributing all of these goods to everyone. So here you think of John Rawls, theory of justice, if everyone could be made happy by given the material things in life and not being judged upon morality or all the rest, then everything would work out fine. And Mansfield says, that idea or that way of looking at humanity is wrong because it doesn't take into account the central truth of humanity. And that is that we are political animals. But political animals who want what? We want to be important. Every individual believes that they are important. They want to be recognized. They want to be noted. Every human being wants to take the prettiest girl to the prom or the most handsome guy to the prom. People fight over oceanfront property. There's a constant battle that's going on between human beings who have what? Have very complex makeups. There are part of us that's reasonable and part of us that's passionate. But more times than not, what defines who we are, Mansfield argues, is our will, our thumos, our spiritedness, our desire to stake our claim in this world. So no end of history is going to be real as long as that end of history entails human beings doing what human beings do, staking out their claim to importance. Now, Mansfield argues that we have been misguided or misled by social science to not take into account the human in trying to understand the human condition. Well, why? Well, from the beginning of the 20th century onward, and here he quotes a famous book by a man named Harold Laswell, we tend to define politics according to the following. Who gets what, when, and how? Mansfield tells us that uh, we begin to understand politics and history as a matter of getting. But most important in understanding the human condition is the who. Who are we? We all are proper nouns. Life is lived by human beings who are proper nouns. They care about their individual well-being. And when they feel doubt or they feel success or joy or whatever it may be, that changes the decisions that they make. Mansfield will also say uh, in his speech that the best way perhaps to understand the human condition as it is is not scientizing who we are, but turning to fiction, turning to the best authors. And think about some of the authors that we've read in the 20th century. Think about Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby or Steinbeck's The Grapes of Wrath. All of these books that kind of give a snapshot of what American life was in each of these decades. Well, what do each of these books tell us about who we are? They tell us, right, that our name matters. Gatsby's name mattered to Gatsby. Jode's name mattered to Jode. I just went over Gary Lambert. Likewise, a 1990s portrait. Human beings live lives as proper nouns. So we follow Harvey Mansfield's suggestion rightly. We begin to see that this uh, understanding of change throughout American history, of movement from one generation to the next, can only be understood if we deal with human beings as they are. If we don't, we will be misled, we will not see things rightly, and we will not be able thereafter to come up with a remedy, both in terms of statecraft and citizenship, that leads us to hold on to those precious treasures that we have as a country of liberty and American greatness.